The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good afternoon everybody. This is Gail Thompson from Secured Signing here. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're joining us from. I'm in Auckland, New Zealand and happy to um, have you participate in our webinar. Um, today the webinar would take about 30 minutes and I will try and uh, keep to that time. I know we're all busy. Um, during the time I'll go through a couple of slides um, outlining what is a digital signature and give you a bit of a glimpse around the um, technology that we use and some of the other technologies that are available in the market and the difference. Um, and then I'll share briefly some of the learnings we've had over the years since we launched in 2010 from working with other organisations that are moving to online document signing and collection of information. Then I will spend as much as I can on actually demonstrating the product and how it actually looks. So what is the experience of signing document online looks like for both um, the person sending out or preparing the document and for those that are signing. Um, feel free to jump in with questions as we go. I have allowed for some time at the end, but if you think of a question while I'm talking, feel free to pop it in the question box that should be in front of you and I'll be able to um, answer that either straight away or later on in the session today. Very good. So um, I start off with just sort of clarifying or asking if people are actually aware um, or know the difference between an electronic and a digital signature. So most people don't know that there is a difference in terms of technology and um, assume that the two are two different names for the same thing, which is just how you sign documents in the web. However, um, there is a difference in technology and it's important to understand it. So electronic signature is the most commonly used type of um, online signing and what an electronic signature is, is just an image of a signature that can be added to any document. This, because it's just an image, it can be copy and pasted by anyone that gets their hands on your signed document with your signature image on it. So it doesn't um, protect people from copying your signature. And the other thing that it doesn't do is give you a, a tool or a way to detect if a document has been changed after it was signed. So therefore, you know, somebody's altered the contract, for instance. So with an electronic signature, you cannot detect it. It is just a tool to convert a squiggle into a picture that is placed on a document. Now, because of some of the obvious issues, uh, digital signature is a much more robust and secure way of signing documents online, and that is the technology that we use as secured signing. It is um, powered by what we call PKI, or Public Key Infrastructure Technology, which is a fancy name for a cryptographic technology, which gives you much more security and features um, for the long term and, and the ability to validate the signature and whether something has or hasn't been changed in your document. Um, the other thing is that each digital signature that we create is unique to the signer and to the document. It is not an image, which means it cannot be copy and pasted. Um, and it also includes important information like a timestamp and a reason for signing if you require it as part of your signing process. Um, PKI user-based or PKI technology is also the foundation of the blockchain and it is technology that's been around since 1976. So it is very robust and tested and continues to be um, applied in other ways in the um, technology world today. So over here I've just got two images and the um, question is which one of these two is a digital and which one is an electronic signature. So if you guess number two is the digital, you were in fact correct. Um, and number one, as you can see, is the electronic signature there. Uh, if you do want to know a lot more about this and the point of difference of secured signing to other signing platforms, we have a lot of information on our website um, and quite a few really simple to understand blog articles that you can have a look as well that just explains some of the more practical implications um, for you. So we compare it to the modern wax seal, um, that's the role of a digital signature. 
Okay, so um, that's all the technology stuff. Um, now we're talking about more implementation and sort of thinking what you should plan for when switching to online document signing. So I've sort of tried to sum up the learnings we've had into four key steps. So what we found is if you start with a really clear process in mind, um, it helps. Impl uh, implemented well. So map out the current business process, which would include things like what is the role of different people within that process. So when you say a recruitment agency or a lawyer, you're preparing a document, um, who are the people that actually put the paperwork together? Um, who is responsible for sending it out to um, customers to sign? Um, and who you know might be a reviewer or sort of an overarching um, monitoring or managing role in the process. So for example, um, the person who would send out the document for signing would be the document owner or the sender and they would require a secured signing account with us. Um, the invitee is the role of the person who's simply signing a document, they are not preparing it, they've just been um, sent an invitation for signing and an invitee does not need a secured signing account. So an invitee might be an internal person or an external person or a combination of the two. So they do not need a secured signing account um, and I'll show you in our demonstration the, di the difference in roles and what they need. Uh, lastly, a reviewer is a type of person who per perhaps between the document owner and the invitee there's another um, management layer where you want um, the sign off or approval of somebody else internally before it goes out to the invitee for signing. So you can in your workflow add a reviewer. Secured signing is known for a highly um, flexible and uh, feature rich signing workflow options. So this is a one example um, that you can add to a signing process. So if you have a really clear understanding of what is your requirement, then it's easy to implement and highlight the different roles. The other um, two points just to make on when you're thinking about switching to digital signatures or online signing is how do you actually generate or create your documents and is it something, is your document uh, different or unique for each signing process or do you have a template, so a document that you use over and over again such as an application form, registration form, uh, terms of business, letter of engagement, you know, there are a number of variables that change but the bulk of the document stays the same. So if that is the case, you have um, Secure Signing has some tools where you can create document templates um, within our platform for those scenarios. The final step, so it's is to think about what are you going to do with the digital document that you have signed after or at the end. Um, so if you are using paper processes at the moment you might have a storage cabinet where you keep all your paper. So when you go to a digital way you obviously don't need that anymore. So what platform are you going to be using to save your documents? Um, secured signing by default is not a document storage platform. Um, so yeah, you do need to think where you're going to put it in. We do have a history or the ability to keep your documents in our platform long term, but it is a, something you have to turn on. It is not there by default. So again, hopefully you're thinking about that. Um, and what we found is a really successful um, implementation is one that you either start with a very clear one process that you um, get a couple of champions, whether it's with one department. Um, so then you have those champions that when you're rolling it out to the wider organization, you've got some strong capabilities within um, the organization already that know and are familiar with the process so it can help other people as well. Okay, I'm just seeing if there's any questions before we jump into the demonstration. No. Okay, so what I'll show you now is the secured signing platform. So this is, um, I've logged into our secured signing platform, we are a cloud-based um, solution, so you would go to our website and click on the login button and put in your credentials. Those that need to do that are the document owners or senders, only they need to log into secured signing. Once they're here, you've got these buttons are sort of your key drivers in terms of what is it that you're wanting to do. So um, do you want to sign a document that has been sent to you? So that was known as an I sign. Do you want to create um, 
send invitation to other people known as we sign and this is probably most commonly used and then we've got our two form creation tools form filler and form direct form filler is the do-it-yourself tem template builder and form direct is we can build customized forms for you and we've got access to um, you know we can really personalize and, and use some um, cool technology that is just not available um, for you to do yourself because you need to have some some technical expertise. Um, the last one, Smart Tag, is a really powerful automation um, tool. So you can, if you are creating your documents outside of secured signing, you can um, get them ready for secured signing by placing signature tags in your document with what we call a Smart Tag. So when you upload the document to secured signing, we pick up the the tags and we automatically take it straight to the final step which is just sending out the invitation so I'll show you what I mean by that but the process I'm going to focus on today is the we sign um, so to start off a signing process I would recommend that you click on the add document button to bring your document into secured signing all right so today I'm going to use an NDA as my example. So I've uploaded my NDA here and then I click upload. Once I've done that, I've got three buttons that are available to me. So I can say to sign and that's sign myself, invite, which is what I'm going to show you, or template if I wanted to create it into a document template. When you click invite, there are two remaining steps now that we've started off the we sign process. So firstly, you need to tell the system who needs to sign and where, and you do that by going to the right page in your document that needs to have the signature on it. Then follow your nose with the red button and click on the add invitee signature. Here, to invite somebody to sign, you need to provide us with their email address, first name and last name click add. Now you've got a signature box. You can position the signature box wherever it's required inside your document and you can say whether it's a full or an initial signature. The information such as the date and time and the name will also be displayed inside the signature box by default but you can remove that by simply unticking it. So that is all available to you. If you do have a large document that has um, signature boxes across it. You can use our multi-page signing, page selection, and then choose which document, which places within the document need signature, and then you can still manually position it for each one, for example. To add more people, you simply go again, or to add another signature box, you just simply click on the name there. So once you've told the system who needs to sign and where, you click next and it takes you to the invitation workflow screen. Now, I'm gonna take a bit of time explaining this screen because this is the screen that repeats itself, um, depend, you know, even if you're doing um, a template or um, a smart tag, you will see this screen. Some of the um, things to note is, I'll start off with the due date. So in the due date, you need to set um, when is the signing process due. You can have a system default. So in this example, it's defaulted to seven days from today and from now. Um, but the due date is really important because that sets how many um, reminders will be sent to the invitees, okay? so. You can completely customize that yourself. But for example, for um, less than seven days, we send out one reminder, and for seven days or more, we send out two reminders. But again, you can completely change that yourself. Um, if there were multiple people in the signing process, you can click sequential, and then it chooses the order of which um, people are signing, one, two, three, and you can drag and drop that as well. Um, other features that are shown here, are what you see is depending on which settings you've turned on. So for example, I've enabled effective date. So effective date is commonly used by our um, legal customers. So if you're not a legal customer and you're not thinking you need effective date, you just simply don't turn it on and it's not visible in the screen. Likewise, if you don't think SMS is functionality that you would like to use, um, you simply turn it off in the settings and it won't be visible here. But 
on the topic of SMS, we do um, use that technology in two ways. So SMS authentication refers to two-factor authentication and SMS notification refers to the invitee is going to receive a text message with an invitation to sign um, on their phone. So they can start the signing process on their phone. With two-factor authentication, they still need to click on the email and then it generates uh, a code which is sent to their phone specifically. I'm going to untick them because I don't want to use them at the moment. Um, review before signing is if you're wanting to read the document, um, the person signing to read the document first, and only once they've fully read it, um, they can click to sign. So um, I won't demonstrate that today, but again, that is uh, important. And all of these extra workflow steps in the signing process are get added to the audit log, which becomes your evidence for the signing process. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can also edit the email that they're going to receive. So they're going to receive an invitation email. So you can choose and build a list of templates that your document owner will choose from depending on the process that they're doing. Or they can type a personal message as well, just like you would type in an email. The same applies for the email completion. You can build your own templates for that. Um, we also have the ability to attach documents to a signing process. So if, for example, with the contract, there's a couple of documents that they need to have read, but they don't need to sign them, you can add them as an attachment and you can add it either as an attachment from your computer or into the secured signing library here. A few other things to mention, we can also add the, you can copy people in to a signing process. So you can copy them in either when the signing process starts as a notification recipient or on the completion of a signing process here. So you simply click and you add your recipient's details. I've already added info at Secure Signing, which is a dummy payroll account, but you can add more people. If you want to remove them, you just untick and click OK. So that is how you can copy somebody into a signing process that isn't the invitee and isn't um, the document owner who's sending it out. If you are using some of our cloud storage, you can also choose um, where, so this is Google, for example, um, whether I want to use just a generic secured signing folder or I want to use the actual um, folder within my Google Drive. So you can choose which folder it is safe to. So as you can see, there are a lot of features and functionality, and I haven't even explained all of them or activated everything in Secured Signing. So depending on your industry and your business process, I would encourage you to have a look at our features list, and you might find something else that I haven't covered today that will be really relevant and um, valuable for what it is that you're doing. So once you do this, you click Send and the signing invitation has gone out. Now, before I show you the signing invitation, I want to show you one more thing. So all pending or live signing invitations sit under the In Progress tab, which is here. Um, and this has a list of our documents that are currently live or have expired. So in um, this one that we've just sent, NDA, we can see the status here and we can see it hasn't been signed. We can also do quite a few things while it's pending. So we can view the document in case somebody gives you a call and they're a bit stuck, you can help them through by looking at what they're seeing here. You can view the document log, which has all the steps that have taken place so far. So you can see if the invitee has um, received the email, if they've opened it, if they clicked on the link and if they've signed as well. So you do that in the document log. You can see all the email communication that has happened to date. Um, you can verify the signature if um, it's sort of have a few signatures already. But the most important one is to check the signing status. Here you can see um, where each person is, is up to. You can also make changes to a live signing process without have, having to start again. So you can change or um, extend the due date, you can copy in other people, you can amend the details of the person. So if Greg unfortunately is not available, you can change it to Amy and then we will send a new email to Amy. You can activate the face-to-face -face signing if they're now, say, have come and met with you and they haven't completed the documents first, or you can change it to a in-person signing. And this is a whole separate demonstration, so I'm not going to have time to, to cover that today. Um, 
and you can also give them a bit of a nudge and send them a manual reminder if you think they need it as well. So this is what you can do without having to start a signing process from scratch. Okay, so what happens next is your um, invitee is going to receive an email invitation from Secured Signing and this is what that looks like. It's going to have um, your brand on it so you can add your branding yourself out of the box um, which is really easy. It's going to have any information here if you've used a, a, a specific template but this is just a generic one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click um, on the blue button to start the signing process and I'm going to need to enter this four digit pin, uh, passcode to access the document. This is for an authentication step that is required. It is a minimum authentication step and it is a um, mandatory part of the process. Once you've clicked and accepted the terms and conditions of electronic um, document signing, you're taken straight to the signing button where you click on the first signature box. And this is when you get to capture your signature. So depending on the um, device that you're using, your signature capture methods will change. If you're using a desktop or a tablet, you're going to have the full suite of options. So you're going to have a font, a mouse, um, where you can draw with your mouse. You can have upload, so you can upload an image um, or two of your signature, fax or extend it to your mobile phone. If you are using a, tab, um, a mobile device, it will just be to draw your signature with your finger on the glass. So once you're happy with your signature image, you click sign and then it takes you through to the next box and then you're done. So that's how easy it is. Now on completion, what happens is that the document owner, the invitee, and anyone else that has been copied into the process are going to receive a completion email. So this is it. Um, and there it's got the document log, which again is the evidence of the signing process, and the signed document attached, which is the most important. So all parties receive the signed document attached. Here it is there, and you've got the nice green tick that the signature is valid, um, and there it is. So if I think, um, just go back to secured signing, what happens in secured signing is that the document has now moved to the sign tab. Just need to log back in because I'm between different users. So in the sign tab here, it's got my NDA document, Greg Smith at 322. Um, I can view the document here. Again, the document log is, is going to be in secured signing here. Um, I can email the document to myself or anyone else as well. And I can kick off another signing process if I need to add more signatures or want to add my own. So again, it depends on what you need to do. It's important to note that secured signing, as I mentioned, we're not a document storage platform. So after seven days, post a completed signing workflow, your document will be deleted from our system. Um, unless you turn on the history function tab that I mentioned, which is in the settings, and then we keep the document um, forever. There is no additional cost for that, but it is a setting that you need to um, manually turn on. It won't be there by default if you don't. So that is how simple um, a signing invitation is process. I'm not going to have time to cover our templates um, tool. But what I would encourage you is, if I just go back to our website, is to have um, a play around. If you don't already have a secured signing trial account, just click on the free trial account and register. Um, you get three free documents each month to play around with. Um, but if you do want a few more documents, once you register, you can contact our support team um, through here. And we can, um, if you request, we can load you um, some more documents for testing. Just mentioned that you've attended the webinar and they will do that with, with no problem. Um, in terms of some help, we do um, have a take a tour button here, some um, a user guide here with full details of um, all of the functions and we also offer some training if you do wish to have some more help um, from our helpful customer service representatives. Um, just trying to see if there's any questions. One topic I do always get asked about is just the pricing. So um, I encourage you to go through to our pricing page on our website if you do want to know 
um, some more information about pricing. But in summary, our pricing is made up of two factors. So it is how many users within your organization need to be able to send a document out for signing. So that is how many users essentially you need to access or log into secured signing. So that's the first part of the calculator. And step two is around the volume of document that you're going to be signing. Um, and here you can change it between monthly and annual pricing. So have a play around with that and then click get pricing where it will give you um, the pricing options that are available for the volume that you're looking for in your local currency, depending where you are um, from. If your volume exceeds a certain amount, um, it will refer you through to our enterprise sales team um, as you qualify for our enterprise um, offering. And then we will discuss a tailor quote uh, for your specific signing requirements and business processes. So we have that as well. Um, but yes, I really encourage you to sign up to the free trial, give it a go um, and just see what you think. Because sometimes, you know, what, until you try it for yourself, it's a bit hard to, um, you know, it's easier to understand that way. All right, just seeing some more questions. Yes, so the question is, can you have an embedded link for a template? Um, yes, you can. So if I jump back to here, and I'm sort of going to, um, so it's under the template section. So you can create, by clicking a new template, you will create a template. Um, I'm going to cover this very quickly. So you can use add form fields here and signature positions. But once you've completed building your template, when you save it, you have the option here to get a link. So if you click this and save, you're going to now create a link. And this is a public link, which um, if I go back is also available here. So all the uh, form URLs or links, you can copy them here. This is the one I've just created. Now you can put this link anywhere on a public website or an internal website, so it's up to you. And what you do is when you have a link to your template, people will go in, fill it in, and then when they sign, it will send them an email just to authenticate them. So it's a slightly different process. Um, I wonder if I've got time to show you that quickly myself. Uh, Tim, nice, sorry, nice street email. You get out at, oh, I should probably do my actual Thompson. Not going to tell you my date of birth, and then <laughs> I'm going to click through to sign. So the difference here, you see, it's picked up my uh, email. I need to put in my name. And then it's actually going to send me an email with a code to complete the signing because I need to authenticate myself. So this is the code here. And then here we go. Here is the code 63. Sorry. So I'll put the code there and I click sign. So it still has an authentication step, but it's someone else. Can the person completing the fields? Yes, so as you so the question is, can the person completing the field within the template then progress the document for signing by another person? Yes, you can because if I go back to that template, which um, hang on, bear with me. So the person filling in the fields can put in other people's details. So they can complete the fields. Sorry, Greg, let's do Greg. So yeah, you can nominate um, whoever it is that's signing and you can still edit this here, but they will need to authenticate themselves. So that email step with the passcode is actually the same as if you were to do it, if you were to invite them directly. So that is how we authenticate the signer in that process. Cool, any other questions? Doesn't appear to be. 
Okay, well, it's 3.30 on the dot, so I will wrap up our webinar here. If you do have any other questions, feel free to email me directly, Gail Thompson at Secured Signing, um, or contact our support team through our website. Really appreciate you joining us today, and hopefully you're feeling a little bit more inspired about your um, business processes and how you can get rid of um, the dreaded slow document paper process that you might have right now. So, um, yeah, thank you again, and wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you.